I have uh, nurses and daily helper who help me to um, to live in my house, not to go to supported living. I am not able to do to do anything, wash myself, wash my clothes, uh, clean the house, nothing. I had the first year, I had a supervisor because I was unable to to uh, to pay a bill. I had a I had a supervisor, I have a social worker because I'm unable to plan the week. So my brain is totally damaged. I was a very intelligent guy. And uh, then the next uh, is the totally, uh, lo I, I lost my sexuality. Sexuality was uh, the, the most important thing for me since, yes, since I can think about my life. I am not able to have sexuality in any way anymore. I can forget this totally. And uh, yes, uh, the, 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 the size is shrunken and uh, my muscles are um, atrophied. I, I, um, I gained fat. I was, uh, I'm, uh, one, uh, hun I'm one meter 90. I'm a big guy. And I was about 105 kilogram. Now I'm 150 kilogram. I'm totally fat, totally uh, not um, masculine anymore. I walk like an 80 year old guy. I uh, I that that's and my my skin my skin is like the skin of a reptile. My eyes you can see. And I degenerated from a healthy uh, 59er now to a 89-year-old guy. I can't go outside. It's sunny weather. Can't swim. I can't use my bicycle. I can't do anything in my garden. I sit here in the dark and stare at the wall. I'm totally switched off. Hello and welcome to the Moral Medicine Channel. My name is Eric and today I'm very pleased to be joined by a fellow post finasteride syndrome sufferer and his name is Emmanuel Kellert. Thank you so much for your bravery speaking out about this problem, Manu. Yes, Eric, thank you for having me. My pleasure. So Manu, by, by all measures, you had a very good life before this disease. You had a background in microbiology, uh, can you talk to me a little bit about your life before you took finasteride? Yes, I had a very privileged life with a father who was a doctor and with a mother who was pharmacist. And um, I grew up in a wonderful green suburb of Düsseldorf in the middle of Europe, one of the best areas of the world, I think. I visited uh, high school, then I studied in Berlin, that was a very exciting city and um, uh, an exciting time too. And um, yes, I, I like to join parties. I was very addicted to women and yes, to sexuality. And uh, yes, I enjoyed my life. It was a it was a wonderful uh, it was a chaotic life but it was a wonderful life and till the day I took finasteride I would live this life again. So, I would like to ask you, Manu, can you tell me briefly when did you decide to take finasteride and why? Yeah, this is a, the big problem. It's the story is a killing joke. Yes, it's a real killing joke. I uh, entered the, uh, I had an urologist, a very good urologist who already um, take care of my father. And my father had a uh, prostate um, surgery in the early 80s without any problem. He had an erection the next day. He was very proud. And with this urologist, I, um, I worked together 
I have to say, you see, I'm older than the average here. That's mm. very important. I took this uh, finasteride pill not for um, male pattern, uh, male hair loss. I put it for benign prostate hyperplasia. So I represent a very, very big group of mm. elderly men who get this dangerous pill for mm. their prostate is issues. And I was in, a, in very good hands with this urologist. He was very careful. And once he told me, uh, there is another pill, but I don't want to give you this because I'm, uh, because, uh, I'm afraid it's not good for you. Mm -hmm. And I fool didn't ask, what is this pill? What is mm -hmm. the name of this pill? I left his practice and thought, uh, he don't want to give me all the pills on the market. So I um, visited another urologist who uh, who gave me Tamuzolin, and he was a typical pharma a pharma driven urologist with no interest in the safety of his patients. And one day I visited him. I saw the pharma representative going out of the practice. And in this moment, he showed me two packages um, who, uh, which uh, the farmer representative left there for as a present, as a present for the next for the next patient. And he told me, "Ah, we we have one medication more." And I told him, "No, I don't want uh, any medication because I'm um, sexual active. Uh, I I'm in a relationship." And I don't want to have this. And he said, okay, then better not. He said, then better not to me. And uh, in the moment I left his practice, he gave me the, the packages just to try. And I, fool, didn't uh, realize what I have done there. I had to ask him, what are the side effects? Uh, but he told me nothing, nothing about this. And uh, in Germany, there is a red hand letter that uh, doctors have to inform their patients about this dangerous drug, Finisterid. Not only the dermatologists for hair loss, the urologists have to inform their patients. And he didn't do, he didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, a mirror of my experience with this as well. I was not given any safety information or any notice about the side effects, even when I asked. So Manu, the follow-up question I want to ask is uh, related to the answer you just gave, but I do want to make it very clear. When the drug was prescribed to you, what kind of safety information was provided to you by your urologist? What, what were you told in terms of the safety information? Definitely nothing. He, 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 pre he presented the drug and I thought, uh, said I'm sexual active. And then he said, then better not. That was all. Leaving the practice or leaving his, his office, I got this package with me just to try without any information, without any information. And uh, yes, I could visit him again and ask, what have you done? But he died on COVID, so I had no chance to visit him again. Uh, his pleasure, I think, <laughs> that I never visited him mm -hmm. again. So, Manu, can you talk to me about your experience taking finasteride? How long did you take it for? And when did you notice that something was wrong when taking this drug? Yes, I had this drug half a year in in my sideboard and uh, didn't didn't touch this poison but uh, yes and then i had a I had a, a struggle in my my relationship and i was under pressure psychological that that's the next the next stupid thing mm -hmm. and um, every normal guy would enter a liquid store and drink a drink a bottle of, of whiskey and I fool thought now the relationship is over so now I start this uh, this medication 
And uh, yes, the mistake of my life, it was the 15th February of 2021, the day I killed myself. And um, I saw the first reactions uh, in the in the um, in the first weeks already. The, the first night, I, I uh, there was a tingling in my prostate, and I full thought, okay, now my prostate is it, it's something good for my prostate. But this was a reaction bad for my prostate. And uh, over the time, I. Um, Yes, I, I was masturbating and I saw my cock was breaking together and I, 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 the, the erection was yes. away. And I thought, oh, what is that? But I, um, yes, I don't know why I took the, the poison and put it in the ashtray. I thought, okay, this, um, that was the leaflet. The leaflet gaslighted me that it's only all these sites are only temporarily, that the sites go away if you uh, quit. And they only mentioned the side effects can hold on after quitting, but hold on after quitting means for me, hold on for two weeks or three weeks, not lifelong. There, in the red hand letter, they write, it can hold on for 10 years. But in the leaflet, uh, the, these frauds only write it can hold on. And so I thought all that what I've seen uh, is temporarily. And uh, yes, uh, at, at, um, at Easter 2021, I saw already shrinkage and brain fog. I got my pre-crash while on this drug. Okay. And so, one thing very important, sorry, uh, that was told to me by other guys, in the first uh, weeks I had some kind of hypersexuality. Well, this was uh, this was the next um, bad thing that you that you are gaslighted by the drug itself too. Okay. Got it. So what happened when you stopped taking the drug? So how long did you take the drug for? And please talk to me about what happened when you stopped taking the drug. I took the drug for six weeks mm -hmm. from this February day till the th uh, Tuesday after Easter 2021. And uh, I crashed while I stayed with my relationship again. So if people say it's a depression, <laughs> why should I get the depression of my life in this moment? But in this uh, these days, I um, crash totally. I um, I it's a li little bit difficult situation, but I was totally brain fog. I the reality was I I had a walk and 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 and. Uh, all the surrounding wasn't uh, real anymore, and um, the 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 science was was uh, like in a like in a movie, uh, uh, twisting away from me. It was everything like a science fiction. Mm. Okay, so the things get worse for you after you stop taking the drug. So you obviously you had symptoms while you were taking the drug. Then you stop taking the drug after six weeks. The things get worse after you stop taking the drug. Was it the same, better? Can you talk to me about that a little bit? Yes, Eric. I uh, I first had a picture here in the background, but I have I, I sent you the picture how I looked before I took the drug. Uh, I was a very handsome, best ager of the age of fifty nine. Mm -hmm. I was a um, I was a sportsman walking. I made big uh, bicycle tour through the Netherlands. I was swimming all the summer like an amphibium. I was a human mm -hmm. animal. I was an amphibium. Mm -hmm. I was sexual active. I was social active. I I made little travels with 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 um, 
other uh, parents. Uh, yes, and then um, after this, I, I, um, you see what I am now. I broke together totally. Um, the I think the first summer I was totally out of every reality. I I, I stayed in bed till midday, and it did, and I I. Um, I walked along the railways. I, I walked along the railways uh, to to jump in front of a train. I um, walked up uh, high houses, really to jump up from thirtieth floor, cause I couldn't handle that. It uh, it since since the day I had the crash, every day is torture. It's not the fun to live. I wake up and it's a torture. And in the beginning, I drove uh, to um, I don't know to the to the to the chicken Kentucky chicken, and I I ate a chicken box for breakfast, and I ordered uh, uh, something for for the evening, and uh, I uh, I broke with all my 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 friends. Otherwise, I. The, the neighbors look at me as a bum. It's totally horrible. I'm really sorry to hear that, Manu. Yeah, it's uh, very relatable. Do you mind just listing all of the symptoms that you are currently suffering from as a result of having taken finasteride? So you mentioned brain fog, fatigue, sexual dysfunction. Do you mind just listing out all the yeah. different symptoms? Yes, for um, for <laughs> for them who deny the existence of PFS, I um, there have been someone from the health service who measured my state because uh, PFS is not listed in the ECD scene, ECD ten. They have to measure the following um, diseases and the following. Uh, health problems, and I uh, was so I'm I'm so switched off mentally and so helpless that I got the care level three. Care level three, I uh, get help for I think help for thousand three hundred euro. That means I have uh, nurses and daily helper. Who helped me to um, to live in my house, not to go to supported living? I am not able to do to do anything. Wash myself, wash my clothes, uh, clean the house. Nothing. I had the first year. I had a supervisor because I was unable to to. Uh, to pay a bill, I had a I had a supervisor. I have a social worker because I'm unable to plan the week, so my brain is totally damaged. I was a very intelligent guy, and uh, then the next uh, is the totally uh, lo I lost my sexuality. Sexuality was the 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 most important thing for me since. Yes, since I can think about my life, I am not able to have sexuality in any way anymore. I can forget this totally. And uh, yes, uh, the, 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 the size is shrunken and uh, my muscles are um, atrophied. I, I, um, I gained fat. I was... Uh, I'm uh, one uh, hun I'm one meter ninety. I'm a big guy, and I was about hundred and five kilogram. Now I'm hundred and fifty kilogram. I'm totally fat, totally uh, n not um, masculine anymore. I walk like an eighty year old guy. I uh, I that that's and my my skin. My skin is like the skin of a reptile. My eyes, you can see, and I degenerated from a healthy uh, a 59er now to a 
89-year-old guy. I can't go outside. It's sunny weather. Can't swim. I can't use my bicycle. I can't do anything in my garden. I sit here in the dark and stare at the wall. I'm totally switched off. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Manu. It's uh, very sorry to hear what you're experiencing. Can you describe the impact that PFS has had on your life? I think you've already discussed this a little bit, but maybe you could talk about the impact this has had on your life. Yes, I was. Um, I grew up here in this little village, and uh, I knew everyone here, and I had friends in Berlin from the time I studied. I had friends in the area of uh, Göttingen, where I uh, made um, my environmental um, engineer. And I, um, yes, I had former girlfriends and I had uh, um, the, the child with whom I grow up now, or elderly per persons. I had a social status. I was like a funny, a funny freak with with um, hippie jackets and and uh, sometimes I wear uh, I don't know how do you call that and um, yes I was a I uh, I was a person the neighbors talked with me the mothers with their little childs. Um, um, uh, they talked with me and and I was a social accepted person, a normal human being. And some some old friends of mine were really jealous because I had a good connection. <laughs> like you, I had a good connection to women and I had a, I could talk with everyone. And now I'm degenerated to an old bum. If people see me, especially women now, they uh, they hurry up like uh, like a monster is coming uh, out of my out of my house. That's yeah, that's that's a total dest destroying of a life. Finally, Manu, do you feel like you had enough warning and information about the possible consequences? of taking finasteride to provide informed consent? No, I, I, you, I, uh, the, the good thing is the, the awareness like, like PFS Network and uh, Moral Magazine is, ri is raised with many videos. And uh, uh, when I got PFS, there have been only a few uh, newspaper articles and there was one uh, there was one or two there have been one or two uh, uh, tv documentations about this and uh, one of this productions made uh, fritz fuchs he's in the german pfs book he was the first to show up thank you for this um, um but um the worst thing you know is that um, that I don't know why I didn't check the internet. That is a problem we all trusted in the doctor. That's the worst thing to trust the doctor. A doctor is not a doctor. A doctor is a pharma salesman. And the second thing is uh, I trusted in the leaflet. And a leaflet is nothing to inform the consumers. A leaflet is a paper to gaslight the consumers. If they wrote there, this drug can make PFS, like in the like at the French package with a black box warning, they can put their fucking drug to the uh, to the to the to the to the garbage. No one would ever uh, take this drug. Yeah, I agree. I also was not provided with informed consent. So, Manu, I'm very sorry to uh, hear everything that you're going through as a result of, of having taken this drug. Uh, but thank you very much for sharing your experience and, and talking about what has happened to you. Yes, it's, it's, uh, 
The only thing I see um, here, all the young guys, I see here 17 year old guys and 20 year old guys who use this drug for hair loss. And um, they don't, if there is not a, 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 a breakthrough in research and, and finding a cure, they have destroyed lives with 20 years. They, they started up to live and then for pharma profit, for the profit of Merck, Sharp and Dome and the generic resellers, their lives have been destroyed. And uh, I'm 59, but even for me, why is there a right to destroy uh, 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 a, a young man's or, or with the SSRIs, a young girl's life for profit? This is this is incredible. And then they uh, uh, say we are all philanthropics and uh, this is uh, cynicism, ugly cynicism. Uh, this denying and telling it's only depression is the next cynicism. And uh, this makes me very angry. And this is so the, the reason why I speak up, because I, I, I think everybody has to speak up to show uh, that what this ugly drug has done to, to them so we can get, we can warn other guys and uh, sometimes, like in France, this drug will go out of the market. That's very important. Thank you very much, Manu. I agree. Thank you for yeah. coming on the channel. Yes, thank you, Eric. Thank you.